Amen. Everybody ready? Oh, it's going to be a good day. It already is a good day. Man, we're so thankful uh, for you being with us today. And, and I've been praying for this service with, with high expectation. And I'm going to introduce uh, Cameron and then following the video to kind of give, set the groundwork for where we're headed to today. Cameron's going to come up. But I just want to say that there, there, there's many people that, that you connect with over, over the, the course of your life. And Cameron is one of those that whenever I uh, have the opportunity to have a phone conversation with him, man, we just preach the wallpaper off the wall to one another. He encourages me, but I'm telling you, he has a heart to reach uh, the, not only the Muslim world, but also to begin to encourage the church to take a shift in their heart to be prepared to release the gospel to the to those that are bound by false religion even here in the United States. Church, we must become prepared. We must become uh, equipped to reach those that are bound by false religion. It's going to be powerful over the next few moments, but after the video, I want you to put your hands together after the video and welcome Cameron as he comes. Let's go ahead and roll this video now. Security officials on alert tonight after a terror message. Declared that Islam is a religion of peace. We get mixed messages in the news. The truth is, Islam has a dark past. What do you think of Muhammad taking a six-year-old as a bride? What do you think of that? Present. Our public lashing because of immodest dress. And future. Fundamentalists who want to impose Sharia law on the West. Well, I think the main teaching of Christianity is love your enemies. Hard to do. I know. Well, that's it. You spend $4 trillion on this war. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked, this violence, an eye for an eye. Significant social change has always come on the heels of spiritual revival. We need to show Muslims the grace that isn't present in their own religion. When Jesus said to pray for your enemies, he didn't mean that we would pray for our enemies so we can get them off our back. He meant that we, through our prayers, would get Satan off of our enemies' backs. We have the greatest opportunity in the history of the church to help 1.6 billion Muslims to encounter Christ. I'm often asked the question, how do I share Christ with Muslims. If that's been your question, my book is filled with tested and proven scriptural revelation that will empower you to authentically and graciously share Christ with your Muslim neighbors all around you. It is time for the body of Christ to capture the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and transform the Muslim world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Now, you're going to have to talk back at me, okay? I'm, I'm that kind of a preacher. Good morning, everybody. Now, I like that better. Praise God. It's such an honor to be with you this morning. It's like I was telling Mr. Anderson, it's like coming back home. I love you all so much. I love the Andersons. They've just been long-term friends, uh, Cody and Amy. Just pastors, Cody and Amy. They're great friends. The, you know, I, I was just asking Amy, I said, any more kids coming? Because every time I come here, there's like, you know, like half of those kids are theirs. The other half, I guess, is the other brothers right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> you don't know. So it's growing. It's good to see the church growing. Every time I've come, I see more people. It's a wonderful thing. That's a church that is healthy. When there's a lot of kids and a lot of young people and a lot of growth taking place, that just shows that it is healthy. Amen? Amen. Just uh, give yourself a pat in the back because you're in the right place. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Um, now, seriously, give yourself a pat in the back. <laughs> Don't just sit there and look at me. Remember, participate. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Um, right before we get started, I want to, uh, I see some familiar faces. Cindy, it's good to see you. Praise God. It's been, uh, she was one of our pastors back in uh, years ago when I just started. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Let me just be real ni nice about that as far as that goes. And uh, 
I also have uh, some uh, helpers, some of our great friends that help us in the ministry. Uh, Drew, I guess Drew grew up in this church. Did he not grow up? He was one of these kids. Now he's in ministry. Praise God. So that's what your impact is doing. Drew, stand up. Stand up, Drew. You just wave at them. And then I've got my other friend, Brett, who helps me with all the videography and everything like that we do. We, the broadcast we do, Brett, please stand up. Raymond Grad, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's awesome to see young men of God on fire for God. Hallelujah. On the way here, uh, we were praying in the Holy Ghost, and, uh, and Drew says, Pastor Cameron, can we pray for you? I said, sure. And as soon as they started praying for me and they began to prophesy and all that stuff, we see a rainbow whew, right over the car. It was so awesome. Glory to God. Are you ready for today? Yeah. Now, I want to speak a prophetic word to you that's going to change your life. Now, the message I bring, it's not like I'm going to stand here and say, thus saith the Lord. But everything I speak to you, it's going to be prophetic. I want you to really get it. You know, God delivers prophetic in a different way. The whole Bible, somebody asked me one time, how do you know the Bible is the word of God? I said, well, fulfilled prophecy. This is all about fulfilled prophecy, and the rest of it is coming to pass now. That's the difference between this book and all the other books that look like this and have a gold little thing around them, and nothing happens. Everything in this happens because it's alive. It's living. Hallelujah. God breathed his life into this book. And when you take this in and breathe it in, you take it in. God is breathing in you life. Amen. So the word that I'm sharing with you is just an overflow. I'm going to share it with you out of an overflow. I'm going to help you equip, get equipped to be the church for this time. In the, in, in the history of the church, if you will. Amen. Now, I was uh, preparing the other day. Thursday morning, I got up, I was uh, preparing for a, uh, for a class that I do, and the Spirit of God, the word that He put on my heart, like the word that He's put on my heart for today, He showed me something that I'd really never seen it like that before, concerning the prophetic. As, as the Lord said to me, He says, you know, Cameron, He says, as you go, and we had a class that we actually, we share a little bit, and then we intercede and pray, Okay. I said, he said to me, he says, as you go to intercede, he says, I want you to show those that are interceding with you how you're going to grab this group of people, bring them into this thing, and then through this prophetic word, get them to where this word needs to go. I said, oh, wow. And then immediately I saw something, that prophetic words are carriers. They're like a capsule. They're like a machine and I literally as I'm sitting there in the quiet before the presence of God Cody what I saw was you remember that movie back in the back to the future the little silver DeLorean and they would get into it and it would go to the future and they would come back and all that stuff the Lord showed me literally I had that image I hadn't seen that movie or thought of, thought about that movie for years you know but I literally saw how prophetic words are. It's just like stepping into that machine. And when you take that word in you, it is able to catapult you into the destiny that that word has for the church or for you individually. So with that in mind, understanding that thought there that the Lord is revealing to us here, I want to show you something that's really powerful. Okay. Um, now, what I'll be reading to you, I'm just going to lay a foundation, then I'm going to get into the real, and I won't take long. In fact, I asked Pastor Cody, I said, how long do I go to? He says, 12 o'clock. He says, there's a screen. He knows I preach long. He says, there's a screen in front of me that's got the time on the bottom left right there. And at the end of it, I said, probably he says, God, God, that's enough. You know, that's, you just, you know. But anyways, no, I'm not going to get there. I'm going to have a short word for you, but I believe I'm going to, it's also on my heart to pray for you. You know, there's some things on my heart that I want to, if you guys are okay with that, we want to just see how the Spirit of God leads. Amen. Let's pray and let's go to the Word in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you right now for your anointing, for your presence. Holy Spirit, have your way here. We surrender to you even now, right now. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking charge of this service, taking charge of our hearts. We surrender to you right now. And we ask you to open our eyes to see and our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what you are about to re release into this house in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. And we decree and declare that Satan and his cohorts are bound right now. They have no 
no interruption in this place any way, shape, or form in Jesus' name. And we thank you that the Holy Spirit has free reign to rule and reign in this place. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. amen. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9. I'm going to just read this one verse and then we're going to jump into the body of the word that I'm actually going to share with you in Judges chapter 6. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 9 to 6 and uh, Judges chapter 6. And I'll read, I will read to you out of the New Living Translation. I like the New Living Translation because it's very contemporary. It's very down to now. And it's actually, based, based on what I understand, it is the closest to the original uh, Hebrew and Greek when you read it. So it is a very accurate translation. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9, the second half of the verse, it says this. We are confident that you are meant for better things. Things that come with salvation. Now, here's what the Lord began to show me when I was going through a season, just like my brother shared on how great they are, that whole story about the, how, when, what happened, how he wrote that song. When you go through storms, what you need, you need to hear from heaven. Because the word of the Lord through storms will sustain you, will keep you, will, you know, will uh, catapult you, if you will, especially to prophetic words of God, will catapult you into your destiny. Amen. So I, was, I remember laying in bed and I said, Lord, I need to hear from you about this particular situation. And he clearly directed me to this passage of scripture that says, we are confident. Is that the New Living Translation? No, it's, I don't think it is, but that's okay. Just, that says it too. But the New Living Translation says, we are confident that you are meant for better things. And as I began, things that come with salvation. And then verse 10 says, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him. Okay. He will not forget how much you have loved him. And he says, and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. This is a word to the body of Christ, especially those that are actively involved in the body of Christ. You know, the leadership in the church that lead the church into the presence of God and into the destiny that the body has. Uh, that God has for the body of Christ. So what was really interesting is when the Spirit of God spoke this to me, He says, we are confident that you are meant for better things. I literally saw in that very moment the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit coming to rescue of the body. We. It didn't say I'm confident. He says, we are confident. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit came to me and to you. And just two weeks after that, He says, that's the word for 2017. What the Lord spoke to me. This is back in September of 2016. I had asked him, what's the word for 17? And the Lord says, 2017 is the year for better things. So maybe you've gone through some challenges. Maybe you've gone through that storm that our brother was talking about. That he drew a picture with that song that we sang about how great thou art. And God is a great God. He loves us. He will not leave us in the storm. He will deliver us out of storm if you believe him. See, everything works by faith. You've got to believe in the love that he has for you. You've got to believe that he cares about you enough that he would come to the rescue. And just like that morning as I was laying in bed, literally devastated almost in, in my, I mean, just the enemy was coming from every angle, if I can say it this way. What the Spirit of God began to show me was he says, we are confident, Cameron. The Father, the Son, and the Lord, we are confident that you're meant for better things. I said, thank you, Lord. Things that come with salvation. So these things that God is going to be speaking to us today comes with your salvation. Amen. So how many saved people we have here? I believe every hand is going up. And if you're not, if you didn't raise your hand, you will have an opportunity to receive Christ today. Amen. So now with that in mind, let's go to Judges chapter 6. Now I'm tying this to our Christian responsibility. See, even though we go through storms, that does not mean we release our responsibilities as Christians. The key to maturity in Christianity is staying with it, if you will. Do not back down. Do not. I'm not saying you don't get tired yet. I'm not saying you don't feel like quitting sometimes. We all do. In fact, if you don't ever feel like you're quitting, you feel like quitting, your dream isn't big enough. Come on. Yeah, come on. 
Did you hear what I just said? If you don't feel like quitting, you need to get a bigger dream by God. Now, I'm not saying this to dream up something. I'm saying just get in God's presence, your dream gets bigger. Glory to God. Amen. You can't stay in God's presence and your dream not gets bigger and bigger. I mean, every time I get in the presence, I said, my God, Lord, you really want me to do that? Yes. He says, yeah, just let's do it together. I said, yeah, man, let's do it. Amen. So now, in um, Judges chapter 6, verse 1, again, I read out of the New Living. He says, the Israelites did evil in the, sight, uh, the Lord's sight. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for, uh, for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and the strongholds. Notice, the body of Christ, in this case, if you just draw this into current time, season, and the church, okay? The body of Christ was hiding in strongholds and caves. The, the, the people of God, because of something that had happened, they were hiding, okay? In caves, in strongholds, in dens. And then as a result of this, you read on. He says, whenever the Israelites planted their crops... Mar marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east, say the people of the east. I'm tying this to what's happening in our world where Islam is concerned. Okay, in fact, these Midianites that it's talking about, they are their predecessors. Basically, Muslims came out of, Muslims are Midianites. Literally, those are the Ishmaelites. Midianites are the Ishmaelites. They come from that background are you are y'all hearing what i'm saying here so so i'm tying it into our responsibility for the hour the church god is giving the church a huge responsibility to reach out into a, into the hearts of a people group that if we don't do our job we will be held responsible when we stand before god and he's going to say, what did you do with the responsibility of Gideon? After today, you will have no excuse of saying, well, I didn't know I should do that. And I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God right now. And this is not a kidding joke, joking or anything. In there. There's 1.6 billion people out there that don't know Christ. Okay? And the only hope for their eternity is Him. And the only way they can know Him is if the church goes. If the church does the response, if somebody, you know, and I, when people know what we do, and people come up to me and say, Brother Cameron, thank you so much for what you're doing. I'm glad you're doing it. And they always want to give me one of their Muslim friends' name and phone number to call them. I said, listen, the reason that person is in your life, it's about you going to them, not me going to them. I'm just going to equip you to go. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Don't put all the monkey on my shoulder. I'm going to put it back on your own shoulder. Hello. I will spank thee. <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Everybody stretch your phone, uh, for, search for your hand like this toward me. Say it. Because we're going to get serious now. Say, Cameron, we love you. <laughs> Amen. That, now, you said you love me. Now, I remember that. <laughs> no. Whether you love me or not, I'm going to still preach it. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, he says these, these, these people group came against the covenant people. Now, it's interesting because I was looking this up one time, and I looked up the, you know, the word Amalek, you know, and all this. And these were people who were against covenant people, the Israelites. Israelites were the covenant people. These are enemies, they call it, of the covenant people. All right? We are covenant people. We have a covenant with Almighty living God. Amen? And what God is saying here is, in this scripture, he says, they, you know, they came against them camping in the land and destroying crops as far as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. I think I'm in the country, so we can talk like this. Hallelujah. Amen. We just saw some sheep coming in. You know, there's a little you know, ranch up here, I guess, or what have you. So these enemies, enemy hordes coming with their livestock and tents were as thick as locusts. There were about 1.6 billion of them. Okay? They arrived on droves of camels, too numerous to count, 
as they stayed until the uh, uh, and they stayed until the land was stripped bare. Now listen, the thing about it is this: we got to understand if you're going to minister to Muslims, I want you to really get this, and I'm going to get to this in a second. If you're going to minister to Muslims, we have to be able to separate between Islam and Muslims. Islam is a principality; it's a spirit. Okay. It is a spirit that feeds on warfare. What's happening in our world, the more you fight Islam, naturally, carnally, politically, any of those natural ways that for years nations have tried to do to overpower that, that people group, if you will, anytime you fight that spirit, naturally it grows because it feeds on warfare. Islam feeds on that principality, feeds on warfare. So the more you feed it, the bigger and grow, uh, stronger it gets. It takes more territory. Past 1,400 years, okay, Islam has grown, taken more territory than ever. Why? Because people don't know. The church, the, really governments don't know. This is a word to the governments even, okay, that... You know, I was talking to a friend, and I, in fact, I mentioned this to Pastor Cody when we were talking about this meeting a few weeks back. I said, I know I have the answer to the Islam problem. I know it. I, notice I didn't say the Muslim problem. And I'm going to define the difference in the two. And this principality, as I shared with you, it's a spirit. And the only way you're going to be able to deal with this principality is if you deal with it on the realm of the spirit. You cannot deal with this politically. You cannot deal with this uh, militarily. Because when you do that, you might have the biggest, baddest bomb you can drop, but you're going to have them come out of any other holes. And you're gonna, they're going to get stronger. But there is a way we can stop it in its track just like that. We've seen it work already through the ministry, and we're seeing hundreds and thousands of people, Muslims, become ex-Muslims and receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. I mean this sincerely. I'm not just saying this. This is. Serious. I'm going to show you a testimony at the end. Uh, just a quick testimony. You see what God can do with someone that is that hears the gospel under the anointing of the Spirit of God. And we are all anointed here. Okay. So now the difference between Islam. Islam is a spirit. It is a principality. Muslims are obviously those that are under the spell or under the control of the spirit. These people are the, the very people that Jesus Christ died for as well. He didn't just die. Jesus just didn't die for the West, for the Western Christians only. He died for the world, for God so loved the world. Are you, um, do, we know that scripture, right? For, love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him. Now, how are they going to believe unless somebody, is go, somebody goes, somebody is sent? The thing about it is this, the, this passage of scripture I'm reading to you right now, it shows what the root issue is, was then and is now. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, the spirit of Islam, one other point I want to make about it, it is a, it's a controlling spirit. It's a spirit of fear. Okay? It controls by fear. When we talk about terrorism, terrorism is nothing but a force that it tries to control you by fear or direct you in the direction it wants to go through fear are you with me so you won't do this or you won't do that okay that's how they work as far as that goes so when it comes down to islam you gotta know the spirit the the principality the the ideology now this ideology encases itself the spirit encases itself in in a religion in the form of a religion, but it's nothing but a false religion, nothing but from God. It, this is not from God at all, because God does not operate or does not try to control by fear. Are you with me? Anything that is of fear is not from God. Always settle that. If you're afraid of doing something, make sure that you're not under the control of the spirit of fear. Because really what's happening, if you're afraid of anything, and we all deal with fears. I'm not talking about being scared of something when somebody says poo to you, like you're, you're afraid. Like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you have a spirit that is trying to oppress you through fear. Are you with me? So now, the thing about it is this, guys. I want you to really get this, church. The very people, the Muslims, are under the same spirit, that spirit of fear. I had a 
gentleman one time called me from Iran through, you know, we have these television broadcasts that we broadcast. And he says, I really want to believe what you just preached. And I preached on the love of God and the grace of Jesus. Amen. And he says to me, he says, but in Islam, it says that if I, if I go away, you know, if I, if I, uh, if I pray with you, I'm going to go to hell. I said, my friend, let me just tell you something. That's the very reason Jesus came, to deliver you from hell. Hell. He came, that love that you heard is the very reason he gave his life for, for you. I was telling him. He gave, and you know what? He prayed the prayer of salvation and he received Christ just like that. Because somebody reassured him that Jesus Christ died for you. And if you were the only person on the planet that didn't know Christ, he'd still come for you. Glory to God. Doesn't matter what background we are. You know, Jesus was Middle Eastern, right? So he didn't come just for the West. He came for the world. So for, for God so loved the world. The whole world. Every people group. You know, when we stand, you know, a lot of y'all, you know, you guys support what we do. And I'm grateful for that. You know, when you get to heaven, you're going to have some loud ex-Muslims next to your mansion cooking you Persian food. <laughs> and they, Persian food is good if you haven't had it. You know? <laughs> you know, glory to God. They're going to say, thank you. They're going to tell you, thank you for you know, bringing the gospel to me. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So, so what happens here, he says, so this, this event is taking place. I want you to uh, these the body of Christ or the covenant people are in hiding. And you go down to verse 7. He says, when they cried out, they finally got to a place. That they cried out. You know, I've been sharing the same message I'm talking about for years. Pastor Cody knows about it. But finally, the church is getting to a place that they're inquiring more about it. As I, I've shared this, and they look at me like I'm talking to a wall. I'm not kidding you. They finally cried out. When, you know, when we get to a place that things get desperate enough that we need real solutions rather than playing church solutions... Are you with me? They cry out. They cried out to the Lord because of Midian. Because of Midian, because of what, the, what was happening, they cried out to God. Now, how many of you guys are you really praying for Muslims? We have a banner over there, pray for Muslims. I mean, the key is this. Many of us aren't even thinking that direction. The church for the whole, for the most of it, 95% of the church is not even thinking that direction. You know why I say that we need to pray for Muslims? Because if you don't pray for a people, you'll never have a heart for those people. Prayer develops a heart of God in you for a people group that otherwise would never receive Christ. Are you with me? And that prayer, as I was sharing in that video, paves the way. Removes the opposition. Removes the enemy off their back. So when you actually go and share the gospel with them. Share your story with them. Listen, don't go out there quoting scriptures to them. Tell them your story. Yeah. Just tell them what happened to you. I guarantee you, when you tell your story, people are interested. Because your story is their story. Yes. You, they feel the same mess that you've come out of. They've, they're facing the same opposition, same challenges. If you've gone through different difficult things, you know, if you've had that storm, that has blown, you know, that storm has prepared you to tell, a, to tell a story when you came out of the storm. Are you with me? So they cried out. He says, when they cried out to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet. You can say it sent a prophetic word. To the Israelites, I didn't mean to you say it, but I said you could say like he sent the prophet. <laughs> Thank you. You are so responsive. I love that. You are a good church. A plus. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites and he said, the Lord said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Now here's what the Spirit of God, the Lord, of Is the Lord God of Israel is saying to the church now. Okay. I brought you up out of a slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. And listen to this next part. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But you have not listened to me. So what was the reason that he, the Lord gave them over into the hands of the Midianites for seven years? 
because they had not listened to God. What did God say? He says, you shall not worship the gods of the Amorites or the Midianites. Are you with me? If I ask somebody who says, do you worship Allah? They say, no, I don't. What are you talking about? You, you crazy, Cameron? But you know, any time you're operating in fear by not confronting or not going to those very people because of fear, you are already in the hands of that spirit. I know, I told you it's going to get intense in this place. Now don't stone me because I don't need stone chunkers here. <laughs> I'm just telling you the word. This is the truth. Okay? So he says, he says, now it's really, you must, he says, I am the Lord your God. You, I told you, you must not worship the gods. In the actual, the, you know, this word worship, when you look up the original text, original definition, it says you shall not fear the gods of the Amorites. Don't let the spirit of fear from their gods getting you to the point that it brings you under the control. See, when you talk about worship, worship is nothing but submitting to the thing you're worshiping. We were just worshiping Jesus just now, and it was wonderful. What a great worship team. Amen. Amen. We just went into the presence of God. But at the same time, do you realize when you cater to fear, you're worshiping that very spirit and where it comes from. And many people in the body of Christ are not aware that they're actually, I really believe this with all my heart, in 9-11, that spirit was released in its full force into this nation. Are you with me? But we have a responsibility. The only answer to the Muslim and Islam issue is the church. No other answer. Period. Don't come up and give me all these things. People come, you know, with this and that. You got to know all this. In fact, the book that I was just talking about, that's an answer book. It's got revelation in it. It's not, it, it took me 10 years to put that out. I mean, to prepare it. But, you know, it's proven because we already have shown it works where Iran is concerned. The, the heart of, in the 1040 window, how many of you know what 1040 window is? 1040 window is 10 degrees to 40 degrees in the, you know, in, uh, on the planet Earth in the east, you know, all, all the way from this side of the world to that side of the world, 1040. But there's two point, or excuse me, two-third of the, I'm going too fast. Two-third of the world's population that are unreached live in there, in that window. Okay? Now, Majority of them are Muslims, and then there's Hindus, and there's uh, uh, Buddhists. But the key about it is this. I want you to really get this. In that window, if you're going to reach those people, if you're ever going to reach those people, we have to be able to deal with it on the level I'm talking about. If you try to just naturally engage it, and I'm not, and I'm not saying we should not protect our borders, and I'm not trying to get political about this, but what I am saying is the answer is a lot cheaper. The only, the, the only price is your whole life. You're going to have to give your life to Jesus and be serious disciples of Christ. Yeah. That's the only price. Somebody, you know, I told somebody, he says, you know, Jesus paid it all. Now all, it, all you got to do is you got to pay it all. You Meaning you got to surrender your life. Pay it all. I'm not saying you do something to do it. You commit your life to him. Amen? And you do it his way. But here, he says, you must not worship the gods of the uh, Amorites in whose land now you live. But you've not. Listen to me. And the, God, the Lord is still saying the same thing. You've not listened to me. And as long as, let me tell you this, this spirit is prevalent in the land and in your home and in your heart, what's going to happen is it's going to paralyze you from going forward and fulfilling your destiny. And that's exactly what that spirit is supposed to do. It's supposed to, through fear, stop you from reaching your potential and reaching your destiny and bringing the kingdom of God into the planet earth. God wants to bring his kingdom in this earth through you and I. The only way that's going to happen is we, we first have to deal with hindrances that would keep us from reaching that. See, a lot of people, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, see the, I'm sure there are, I know they are, they're, they're Muslims in this community. In fact, they go to rural places, a lot of them, okay? And what happens is when you see them with the garb on, here's what most people do. They're over there, they go. You know what that is? That's a fear operating in you. That's fear operating in you. You remember the story in the Bible? That somebody else did that. When they saw that man that was beaten up, they went. And they were the Pharisees. 
and the Levites. But then there was a Samaritan that went and grabbed that person. He says, listen, I know you're broken. And you're to- I know you're torn up. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to put you on my own donkey. And I'm going to take you to the inn. It's called Faith Center. And then you tell Pastor Cody, and whatever it takes to get this guy into health. And I come back. I'll, whatever it needs, I'll, I'll do it. Got quiet. Man, the anointing of God just fell in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? This is the heart of Jesus. This is Jesus. It's not about putting a badge on your belt, another notch on your belt saying, I'll reach someone. No. Why don't you develop a relationship with them? Why don't you actually find out what they like instead of trying to push what you've got on them? I guarantee you, when they see the real Jesus in you, anybody who sees the real Jesus, they want him. They want him. And listen, you don't need to go to the 1040 window. That's why I brought the 1040 window up. You need to just, the 1040 window has come to us. It's come to Enid, Oklahoma, and Mino, and around here, all around us. You see, I know many of you have people of Muslim background in your life in some form or fashion, at work, what have you. Now, here's the point that I'm saying. You know, I've used to, I really emphasize on the 1040 window, 1040 window. The Lord began to speak to me. He says, Cameron, there's a bigger window than 1040 window. I want you to make the body of Christ aware of. I said, what's that, Lord? He says, is it the, he said this to me. He says, it's a 9 to 5 window. Where you live, 9 to 5, where you work. And they're there. They're there. And the key that I'm, I'm going to point out to you as I bring this to close is your life convicting enough for someone to want the Jesus you have? Or do they even notice a difference between you and themselves and other people? What made me come to Christ was one person at work. Prior to that, the people that went around but kept talking didn't do anything. But the question is, is your life... You know, I was reading something. I was reminded of Charles Finney. He was the, you know, the, in the Second Awakening, he was the, 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 the spearhead in the Second Awakening. You know, he walked into a factory. This was a, just a nominal man, just you know, man of God. He became a man of God, as far as I go. He was a lawyer. He worked a nine-to-five window. Are you with me? And he walked into this factory. And the way he was dressed, he kind of dressed like me, sharp. <laughs> I love myself. <laughs> Somebody said, what the heck is he all about? <laughs> no, listen, you better love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, your enemy is, your neighbor is in trouble. Because he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen, right? And I got those gears running now, hallelujah. Now, look at this. Charles, when he walks in, he was a sharp-dressed man. And two ladies in the factory made fun of him, the way he, he looked and what have you. And all he did was he turned around and looked at him. And when he did, the presence of God on this man was so intense, so strong, that those women fell on their knees and began to repent. My question to you is this. Does your presence convict people on that level that when they see you, they would say, I repent of the way I thought about you? And you know what? The foreman of the factory stopped the factory line, the assembly line, and he says, should we not have revival here? And for the next two weeks, they had revival, and 3,000 people came to Christ. All because of one man consecrated himself to the point, to the presence of God. Not to, well, I'm going to quote this scripture and that scripture. He had a handle on the word. There's no question. But I'm telling you, is the presence of God the 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 driving force in your life or not. It's not about just a Sunday morning service. 
It's about Jesus wanting to rule and reign in your life and be the Lord of your life. So he can use your life as the salt of the earth and as the light of the world. So there is this 1.6 billion people waiting for answers and the world is falling apart. Literally, and let me tell you, so make no mistake, what's happening in the Middle East, God is in it. You know what? He's bringing that whole spirit to its knee so the church can actually lead them to him. That's what, see, you got to see beyond. See, if you're in with God long enough, if you walk with him, pray with him, hang out with him, fellowship with him, you're going to be able to see from another vantage point. You're going to see 10,000 feet high. What's going on down here? Rather than seeing what CNN, Central Negative News, talks about. Are you with me? Glory to God. So, he says, you've not heeded what I've said. You've, you've, you've feared these people. Instead of reaching out in faith and loving on them, you're, he, you're actually supporting that spirit that they're operating in. And it's got in you now, he says. So, you know, the angel of the Lord, he says, right, then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath it. You know the story of Gideon. He puts out the fleece and all that. If it's really you talking to me, do this, do that, and all that stuff. Okay, don't put any more fleeces out. Be led by the Spirit of God. Okay? Because we don't put fleeces out in the new covenant. We are led by the Spirit of God. Just get to know the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you. Right now, that stirring that's taking place in your spirit and saying, yes, 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 just do this. That's the Holy Spirit telling you. This is it. That's that prophetic utterance that's stirring you on right now and convicting your heart when if you're not doing this or not thinking this direction, if you will. And I've come here so I can convict the church, bring conviction to the church so we can rise up and be the church. Do you want awakening in America? The, the awakening in America is tied to the very thing I'm talking to you about. I'll talk about it in the world. Because the Lord gave me a prophetic word and I, it's in there. And I wrote that book in 2011. Now it's becoming hot. See, back then it was the word. But now people are saying, man, I better look for some answers. You know? So my, my reminder says, start to finish. <laughs> You got five minutes. Okay, thank you. See, it's right on. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you with me? But here's what happens. So after he puts out the face, if you will, in this case, and the, he's convinced, okay, God is talking to him, and God has confirmed this assignment on Gideon. And I believe God is raising up Gideons. Okay? As he's done this, he says this, verse 22, when Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he cried out, O sovereign Lord, I am doomed. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. It's all right, the Lord replied. Listen to this. Don't be afraid. You'll not die. Listen, I'm telling you, the Lord said this to me because I was afraid of doing this myself. But he delivered me from fear. He says, Cameron, when I call you, you won't die. If a lot of people, they don't want to mess with them because they're afraid of them killing them. I, how, how many, raise, no, don't raise your hand up. Are you with me? You will not die. And then he says this, and Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Jehovah Shalom. When the Lord, our peace is with us, we won't die. We'll be affected. And then he goes on and, and he made that altar and he's still there and all that. Verse 25, he says, That night the Lord said to Gideon, Take the second bowl from your father's herd, the one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's altar to Baal and cut down. Notice, the thing was, it's amazing that this thing had made an altar in his father's house. Pull down the altar. And cut down the Asherah pole standing beside it. Then built an altar to the Lord your God here on the hill, this hilltop sanctuary. Laying the stones carefully. Now here's what the Lord began to show me. He says, before you can reach the people, before you can overpower the Midianites, you've got to pull down their altars. How do you pull down the altars? You pray, as I shared in the video, for the people. Taking authority over the spirit that is operating in their lives. Particularly, the spirit of fear. Which really comes out of 
Baal and Asherah worship, which is a false real. Those are the gods of false religions. Amen. You take authority. You, you, you take authority over that sphere. And you genuinely, the more you pray, at first you may want, not want to do it. But then as you begin to do it, I guarantee you, God is going to put his heart in you. Amen. He's going to develop, change your heart. So you have, and then when you, what happens is when you come in contact with one of them, you'll have the right word in the right season to tell them. And you just like unravel the entire thing about their lives. And they say, oh my God, how would you know that? Are you psychic? That's what they usually say. You must have some psychic power. I said, no, man, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. He knows everything about you. And he just gave me a glimpse into your life. And they always, you know, as, as you begin to develop that relationship. See, the key is I'm, I'm laying the foundation of this. Build a relationship with these people. Don't just, okay, I want to just, you know, tell them, would you like to receive the Lord? You know, I mean, when that time comes, do that. They'll actually ask you. I guarantee you, the fish will jump in the boat. Right now, the fish are jumping in the boat. Trust me. They are. Glory to God. Are you catching something out of this? Are you getting this? So the, key, the, the, the point, um, three points I want to just remind you of. Number one, you got to know the difference between Islam and Muslim. Islam is the principality. It's a spirit. Muslims are people Jesus Christ died for that are also under the control of the spirit. Okay. Second thing is you eliminate that spirit of fear out of you by knowing how much God loves you. And the way you know that, get to know Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And then lastly is this, as, as you do that, you pull down their altars through prayer. Okay, you pull down those Asherah poles and those Baal, the, uh, worship, the, the, uh, the altars of Baal. And I love what he says in there to Gideon. He says, tear those things down and on top of it build an altar to the Lord your God. What he's saying is before you can actually reach those people, you have to be able to overpower that spirit through prayer, through fast, you know, fast for your friends. I guarantee you, get serious with the word of God. I mean, the thing is, if, if, if you don't, this, now here's the thing, you know that nine to five window that I was talking about? Do you realize 87% of the body of Christ, you ready for this one? 87% of the body of Christ completely check out from God on Monday. That's not the case in Faith Center, but that's the, Reality. I hope not. Disengage from God on Monday. 87%. What that means is really, it's all about them. <laughs> I told you you're going to be convicted. <laughs> but God loves you. God loves us. He wants us to do, to be his vessel of honor. Amen. Amen. Did you get something out of this? Amen. Is this helping you? Yes. Praise God. I wanted to be submitted to the time that I've got. But I want to pray. Let's just pray quickly. Father, I thank you, Father God, for the truth you've shared. I thank you, Father God, for the anointing, the, the, word, the, the word that's come forth, Lord. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, convict hearts. And set your people free from fear, any form of fear, and put your compassion in its, in its place for this people group that are here at our doorstep wanting to know the reality of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now,